Aloha and welcome back to Live at the Legislature for our weekly Senate segment. I'm your Senate Communications Director, Jesse Broder Van Dyke, and our guest this week is a former broadcast journalist turned Senator, Glenn Wakai. Glenn, thanks for being here this week. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So you chair the Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism Committee, and one of the issues that's been in the news a lot lately is the fears of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Can you tell us what the latest is with that? Well, worldwide, there are 20, excuse me, 80,000 individuals that have been identified as carrying the disease. And being that Hawaii is such a tourist-driven economy, we should really be concerned about some of those individuals landing up here. Uh, we should have a very robust screening process to make sure that those who are coming in from foreign countries have a wonderful and beautiful stay here, but at the same point, uh, don't infect us as, as locals or, or fellow tourists as well. So we really need to be vigilant in screening these individuals who are coming here from outside the United States. So we just saw on screen a uh, image that the State Department of Health put out this week. Uh, they're going to be putting up a sign at the airports uh, warning anyone who's been to China to contact them immediately if they're going to be in Hawaii for more than three hours. Um, uh, and the UH Research Institute recently released a study saying that uh, tourism could drop as much as 30 percent over these international fears. Are we doing enough right now to prepare? No, we're not. And when you look at the tourism market, uh, the top three countries outside of China that have infections are South Korea, Italy, and Japan. Japan and Korea are hotbed uh, marketing opportunities for the state of Hawaii. Collectively, Japan and China bring in two million visitors a year. That's two million opportunities for them to bring that infectious, terrible disease to our shores. We don't even have testing kits here in Hawaii. So although we say we have no confirmed cases, well, we really can't say that because we have no testing kits. If I get a sample from you, I send it to the Atlanta, to the CDC, and in a week they'll tell me, Jesse, yes or no. We have to be much quicker in our response time than that. So I understand there's going to be testing kits coming here in March. That's a really good uh, step forward. But we really have to make sure that as best we can, our screening process is bulletproof at the airports. Well, it's, uh, we'll be monitoring the situation closely, and we're going to continue putting updates out on our Hawaii Senate media, social media accounts, and the Department of Health is releasing daily updates now, so we'll continue following that. Let's move on to a happier subject now, Aloha hey. Stadium. Uh -huh. um, you recently got helped to get uh, $300 million, $350 million in funding to redevelop the stadium. Where does that stand? That was a 10-year process, Jenny, Jesse, um, and we finally got the $350 million last year. Um, we're in the middle of an EIS. That's an environmental impact statement that should be done in July of this year. And from there, we'll go out to bid and hopefully by the end of this year have a bidder. And hopefully by this time next year, we are going to start moving dirt. And we see some renderings here. This is not going to be your grandfather's Aloha Stadium. This is going to be the stadium of the 21st century, one that embodies mixed use. So the stadium itself will be the centerpiece, as we see in this video, but it's not going to be the only piece on 100 acres. It's going to be surrounded by mixed use development. Uh, what is that mean? That means hotels, restaurants, shopping, affordable housing, you name it, we want to put it there because we can't have a uh, facility, a stadium sitting by around uh, on a 100 acre parking lot. That is doing very little community benefit for the people of Hawaii. So how is the retail and the hotels and uh, the affordable housing and all that going to help the stadium project? It's going to bring in money. You know, Hawaii, we're land rich, cash poor. We don't know how to monetize our lands properly. Here's a case in point where we have a golden opportunity. And, you know, I know we people there that are out there love parks and they love uh, kind of uh, public use facilities, but this is an opportunity for us to make money. If you don't want to start paying more for rail, uh, childhood education and health care, we need to start monetizing our assets and here's an opportunity to make sure that uh, we will not be increasing your taxes because we can bring in a substantial amount of revenues from utilizing the Loha Stadium lands. Aloha Stadium was opened in 1975, which is almost half a century ago. Were you born? I was not born. I was born in 1978. <laughs> I was born. I saw the Hawaii Islanders play in that stadium. But right now, it, it's a money pit. It costs us $16 million a year to just keep that place standing. And you and I talked earlier, when it was built before you were born, it cost $37 million. And now we're looking at $350 million. So you can see, like, it's like a, having a 1974 Datsun. At a certain point, it's time to just get rid of that baby because it's too much to change the carburetors on it and fix it up. We got to get the jalopy out of our way and build something that also is mixed use itself, that stadium. 
right now only has football configuration. We want to embrace rugby. We want to embrace soccer in there as well. So we have a golden opportunity right in front of us, and we're on a very, very quick timeline. And why is it so important to do it within three years, and is that even possible? Uh, it's very possible. It's very ambitious. We're not going to do this as rail 2.0. It's not going to be over budget, and who knows when it's going to be done. We have a clear timeline that it's going to cost $350 million, and it's going to be done by 2023 for the glorious football season for the University of Hawaii. And the rail, new rail station is going to be operating at that time, and how's that going to be integrated? Uh, well, I don't want to speak for the okay. city, but uh, well, just like coronavirus, we're going to cross our okay. fingers and, make sh uh, and hope that things come uh, w together well. But regardless of the city and the, the rail being there, I mean, this is a state project, and it's going to be on budget and on time. Okay, and uh, it's going to be available for football, rugby, soccer, and concerts? Yep. I'm even trying to think about having a golf range inside the wow. stadium as well. So the top golf guys who were at Alawai uh, and trying to do the project there, I'm trying to bring them into building out a facility within the stadium to launch golf balls uh, while the stadium is dark. Wow. I mean, we got to be making mixed use. When the stadium is active, those uh, golf bays would be turned into luxury boxes. You've got to use a little bit of creative thinking for the future of this build out. Sounds like it's going to be a fun experience. Certainly it will be. See you there. Okay, I can't wait. When's the Beyonce concert going to be? Oh, uh, well, we, we'll build it and hopefully she'll come. Okay. It's like Field of Dreams. Yes, indeed. Um, and so before you were a senator, you were in broadcast journalism. Uh, how uh, has that influenced your political career? I think that journalism is the best, best precursor to life in politics. Mm -hmm. The analogy of a journalist is you're a mile wide and an inch thick. In politics, you're a mile wide and 10 feet deep. Uh, journalism teaches you to distill a large amount of information in a very short period of time, mm -hmm. and that's what we deal with here. You get a master's degree in everything when you're here at the legislature, and I love the learning that goes on here. Uh, but ultimately, we have to make decisions, and you may have to be able to quickly distill all the de the details and to figure out like what's your position, yes or mm -hmm. no. You really have to be able to know about every single subject that's uh, affecting the state. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I can't just worry about ooh, the stadium. I've got to worry about health care on Kauai. I've got to worry about public safety with a volcano on the Big Island, right? I can't, I can't just ignore the fact that I have brothers and sisters across the state who have urgent needs as well. Uh, so that part of it is, is really fun, refreshing, and very fulfilling. Well, thanks so much for coming on this week. I'm really looking forward to watching UH football in the new facility. Yeah, go Warriors. Just win, baby. All right. <laughs> thanks so much, Senator Glenn Mackay. And we'll be back here again next week here on Live at the Legislature. Thank you so much. Aloha.